So this is a little odd spot for me to come to you uh, and start a worship video from this place in my truck. Um, but here I am anyway. We had worship this morning. Um, we pre-recorded it. Actually, no, I'm sorry. We recorded it live um, and then we're posting it later uh, for those who are online worshipers. But we had an audio issue at the front end. So I wanted to welcome you in person because... Uh, uh, we would not be able to hear that. You just see me talking, my mouth moving and no sound coming out. So, um, I snuck off to a quiet place to do it at my home, which turns out to be my pickup truck. So here I am. Uh, but welcome to you. Um, we're, we're glad that you decided to worship in this way, um, online today. Um, we have a covenant and communion service today. Um, we would hope that you would prepare some communion elements um, and click the link that's in the comments below or in the description uh, that will guide you to a, a program that is filled out for you that will help you in your worship today. So um, please join us, uh, be with us as uh, present as you possibly can um, with this pre-recorded worship service. It's a couple songs that there that are on here and then a short message and some time of covenant and communion. Let's take a moment to pray and then I'll put on the music. God, thank you for being able to worship in a variety of ways. Thank you that um, we have an opportunity to worship at all times and all places and that this is a, a medium that we can use to do that. We would ask that, that you would be with us even um, though that this has taken place at a previous time, that you would uh, show your Holy Spirit across miles and time and distance and, um, uh, and connect us together as one body, one people, covenanting and committing ourselves to you in the new year. We praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
many, how many people have already broken their fitness goals? It's <laughs> <That's> awesome. <laughs> um, um, as I was thinking about leading worship this morning, I, I, I just there's this song. It's an older song. Some of you might know it. Some of you might not. Uh, those of you who don't know me, I'm biracial, which means I spend a lot of time in two different worlds, uh, which means sometimes I get to go to chocolate church. Anybody been to chocolate church in here? <laughs> And there's this song that uh, my friends and I would lead, uh, lead in worship circles and multi-ethnic churches. Um, there's one song that rings true no matter where you go. Uh, and as I was thinking about the, tar- the start of this year, um, it's, it's easy to forget the reason that we're here. Um, and so this morning, I just want to take a moment and just remind ourselves what God made us for.
second. Just give him thanks. God, thank you for who you are. God, thank you for who you've been to me. God, I didn't think I'd make it through 2022. The snowstorm almost got me even. But I made it here in this year. This is all for you. This year I'm going to worship more. I'm going to give more. I'm going to be more. which actually say, I believe. Um, it doesn't say we believe. It says, I believe, because it's a personal thing that we all must commit to, to believing and thinking through and, and making an acknowledgement of faith. Um, uh, but there is a corporate sense to we believe as well. Um, I, and I, I want to just say this, that in an era of time where there, it seems like Everybody believes something different, um, and churches are all believing various and different things about various and different things. Um, I wanted us as a church to declare this is what we believe, um, and there would be no mistake about what we believe, because these are the things that we believe. Um, I do get comments and uh, uh, questions from pastors in town sometimes that say, hey, I hear you're preaching about this. Or I hear you're teaching about that. Or do you believe in this? And I'm like, who made you my police? <laughs> um, uh, but I would like it also to be no mistake. This is what we believe. Um, uh, and, and then we can just direct them to the video. <laughs> uh, and for those who are kind of new to the congregation, um, uh, maybe you kind of wonder what do we believe and how do we practice things. So this is uh, a series that will be helpful for you too. To acknowledge this is what we believe. So, we believe. I believe. Today, I'm just going to talk about I believe. I believe. Just those two words. I believe. I think these are two of the more important words in the English language because we can use them frequently. I believe. Um, there's depth and nuance to those two words. I believe. Uh, one can believe that the weather is going to change. I believe that the weather... How many of you thought... I believe this weather's going to change last week. Like, it has to change. It's hard to, be it's hard to believe now that it was negative 24 just last Sunday, was it? Or last Saturday or so. Like, 
It's hard to believe that, but we could believe that the weather would change at some point. One could believe that uh, uh, kids like, uh, I believe I'm going to make a good grade, right? I believe that I'm going to do well on this test. Uh, I believe I'm going to pass this class. I believe that's going to happen. Um, uh, how many of you maybe didn't believe that? Do you believe the opposite? Like, oh, I, I, not, I believe I'm not going to pass this class. And here's another one. It's a good day for this. You might say, I believe that I'm going to have success in my New Year's resolution. Nobody ever says that. Um, they just say, I'm going to make one, and I'm going to try real hard, and then in February we'll talk again. No, how many, how many of you did make some New Year's resolution? Like, I am going to commit to change this aspect of my life and do this thing, and whatever. Yeah, there's good things to do about that, and this is a good time of year to do those things. Um, parents, you might say, I believe my children will grow up to be well-adjusted human beings and contribute to society. Yes, we have that hope uh, because we believe that we will do that and see that from our children. But it's different to say that one person, that one believes in a person. I believe in a person, believes with a conviction, in particular what we're talking about as a people of faith, that a person died and then rose again, and then ascended to heaven. I mean, it's bonkers if you just kind of on the outside looking in, if you haven't been raised in the faith, you go, somebody, you think somebody died and rose again. That's bonkers, but we have to what? What sort? We have to what? Believe in that. We have to believe in it. These days, belief is relegated to agreeing with the thing that feels right. This feels right to me, so I must believe in it. I agree with the sentiment, therefore it must be right. It's like having an intellectual acknowledgement on an agreed upon set of facts. Because you have to agree on these facts. They might be facts, <laughs> but you agree with a, a group of people about them and then you um, believe that because that's what your group believes. And you don't have to be ashamed about it. You don't have to be embarrassed by it because that belief is held by a common group of people. They all agree with you on that belief. Here's what Paul, the Apostle Paul says about belief in Romans chapter 1, verse 16. He says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first, and then also to the Greek. He's talking about everybody. It's not that everybody uh, can believe in this, and salvation is available to everybody. The Greek word for that is pistueo. Pistueo. How about you say that with me? Pistueo. It's a conviction and trust to which a person is impelled by a certain inner and higher prerogative Law of the soul. That's a lot. Of, that's a lot, isn't it? It's a lot. I understand that. And uh, normally I'd have that up here, but too lazy to put all that on the screen. It's not just agreeing on a set of facts. It is an inner conviction of the soul. That's what belief is. Belief is more than all of us just agreeing on. Yes, we think that happened. Belief is a conviction of our soul, an inner, higher, prerogative law of the soul. Here's Romans 10, 9 through 11. Listen for the word of uh, belief in here and think of it in, that, in those terms with that definition. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, those two things, confess with your mouth, believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you will be saved. For the heart, for, excuse me, with, for with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. I use the word three times in that little passage. In the 19th century, uh, the greatest tightrope walker in the world was named Charles Blondin. Have you ever heard this story before about Charles Blondin? Good, because I want to tell it to you now, and I want it to be fresh and exciting. So June 30th, 1859, we're going back a 
ways. He's the first man in history to tightrope uh, walk, tightrope walk across Niagara Falls. Uh, yeah, that's legit. Yeah. Um, 25,000 people gathered at Niagara Falls to watch Charles Blondin plummet to his death. No, just kidding. But that's what they wanted to see. That's why we show up to those things, right? So, <laughs> we're humans, let's be honest. We wanted to see the words. No, no safety harness, no net to catch him. He's going to tightrope a walk across the thing. 1,100 feet suspended on a tiny rope, 160 feet above the raging waters um, around the Niagara Falls, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so he safely reaches the Canadian side of the falls. He didn't die. He lived to tell about it. People watched it. It was great. It was fantastic. Um, so because the crowd was so great, he decided he's going to do it over and over and over again. And then he upped the ante over and over and over again. So he started doing it with different things. He did it on stilts. <laughs> yeah. He crossed, he did it on stilts. Um, another time he took a chair and a stove with him and he sat down midway across and he cooked himself a meal. Yeah, the guy was legit. He ate it while he was there too. Um, he once carried his manager across on like riding piggyback. This is across the Niagara Falls, right? Um, then one time he pushed a wheelbarrow across, loaded with 350 pounds of cement. Yeah, that's heavy. I probably took the, I, I think he probably took the wheel off, you know, like he left the rim kind of thing or whatever. I don't know. Um, on one occasion, though, he asked the cheering spectators if they thought that he could carry a human being across in the wheelbarrow. Um, and the cheer, the crowd just cheered, like, woo, yeah, we think you can, like, you can do it. And this one guy's like particularly exuberantly saying, we know you can do it. And the guy was like, do you believe I can do it? And the man said, yes, I believe. And he said, then get in the wheelbarrow. <laughs> <laughs> to which the man refused. Like, I, I, don't, I don't think I want to do that. It makes it pretty clear. Do we believe in things? So, so what I did today, um, I, I had Mike bring a wheelbarrow, and I set up this balance beam that uh, represents a tightrope because I couldn't figure out how to do a tightrope in this room. And so what I was hoping was maybe somebody would get in the wheelbarrow for me, and I would push you across the, the beam. Would anybody? Oh, I don't care. That doesn't matter to me. I have a waiver. Uh, Rodney, Rodney's doing it. Rodney, do you want this? We got, yeah, we got this. Do you want the helmet? I didn't, I didn't actually think anybody would actually volunteer. But we're going to try this. Do you believe I can do this? Oh, I have another clue. <laughs> All right, Rodney. Let's let's do this in the middle so the people can see it. Okay. Rodney, for show. It's not for show. Hop in there, bud. Okay. We're we're up on our insurance, right? Are we, yeah, short term life, long term disability. Okay, this is Rodney Hendershot, everybody. Let's give him a round of applause. All right, you're not very balanced. We just need to get it right just a little bit. Oh, this might be too close to me. Am I lined up? Maybe. I find that too close to the wall. <laughs> that way. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh no. I don't know. Let's just see if we can get him up that way. Oh, that's too much for it. There we go. I can't see a thing. I got it. All right. 
We had the baptismal pool at the end. <laughs> How are we doing, Rodney? How are you feeling? Good. To the left. You got to be on the beat. I got to be on the beat too. Thanks, <laughs> Keenan. Okay. I don't know. We're looking good. That way. All right. If nothing else, this is going to be memorable. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Rodney. Thanks. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. I don't know if that was worth anything, but it's kids' day, so we have some fun. I'm sweating. <laughs> Mostly because I wasn't sure that was going to work. <laughs> Makes it pretty clear how and what we put our faith and trust and belief in. Are we willing to put our belief in a person, in a human being, in someone that we can see? Uh, it's one thing to believe that a wheelbarrow could go across, that he could carry somebody else across, but what about you? Do you believe that, let's go to the spiritual side, Jesus can carry you across. 2 Timothy 1.12 says, I know whom I have believed in and am persuaded that he is able. The question isn't how much you believe. The question isn't when did you believe. The question isn't why you believe. The question is who who do you believe? We believe is the title of the series, but I believe is the first two words of the, of the message. Your belief is personal. Your grandma, her belief doesn't save you. Your mom taking you to church when you're little, her belief doesn't save you either. You can't believe for your kids. Every person has to believe for themselves. I can't believe for you. You have to believe and confess with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead and that Jesus is Lord of your life. I'd like us to read the Apostles' Creed together. We will say these words. If you Did you get the papers that were passed out? Everybody got a copy of that? Let's, let's read this together. It just starts out with, I believe. Let's, let's say it. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, and the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven. And sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We're going to take a few weeks to just unpack all of those and discover what it means to actually believe those things and how it should impact our lives. We should change our lives around that statement. All of these, we, they come from the Bible. Okay, we're gonna, we're, I'll show you that. This isn't just some human-made thing. It is human, but it's not just some human-made thing. We're going to talk about what the Scripture says about this and then how it should impact our lives and we should be changed by this. We believe it. We should live it. So I would like us to now... We're going to transition our thinking now to this covenant service, and we're going to keep going in this uh, in this passage and in these papers that you have. And as we prepare ourselves to take communion, let's pray together. Written words in your in your handout. Oh God, searcher of all our hearts, you have formed us as a people and claimed us for your own. As we come to acknowledge your sovereignty and grace. 
and to enter anew into covenant with you. Reveal any reluctance or falsehood within us. Let your spirit impress your truth on our inmost being, and receive us in mercy for the sake of our mediator, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Hear now these words from John 15. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the Christian life is redeemed from sin and consecrated to God. Through baptism, we have entered this life. We have been admitted into this new covenant with Jesus as the mediator. He sealed it with his own blood that it might last forever. On the one side, God promises to give us new life in Christ, the source and perfecter of our faith. And on the other side, we are pledged to live no more for ourselves, but only for Jesus Christ, who loved us and gave himself for us. From time to time, we renew our covenant with God, especially when we are reaffirm the baptismal covenant and gather at the Lord's table. Today, however, we meet and renew our covenant. Excuse me. Today, however, we meet as the generations before us have met to renew the covenant that binds us to God. And let us make this covenant of God our own. Commit yourselves to Christ as his servants. Give yourselves to him, that you may belong to him. Christ has many services to be done. Some are more easy and honorable. Others are more difficult and disgraceful. Some are suitable to our inclinations and interests, and others are contrary to both. In some, we may please Christ and please ourselves, but then there are other works where we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. It is necessary, therefore, that we consider what it means to be a servant of Christ. Let us, therefore, go to Christ and pray this together. Let me be your servant under your command. I will no longer be my own. I will give up myself to your will in all things. Lord, make me what you will. I put myself fully into your hands. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and with a willing heart give it all to your pleasure and disposal. Christ will be the Savior of none but his servants. He is the source of all salvation to those who obey. Christ will have no servants except by consent. Christ will not accept anything except full consent to all that he requires. Christ will be all in all, or he will be nothing. Confirm this by a holy covenant. To make this covenant a reality in your life, listen to these admonitions. First, set apart some time, more than once, to spend alone before the Lord in seeking earnestly God's special assistance and gracious acceptance of you. In carefully thinking through all the conditions of this covenant and searching your heart, whether you have already freely given your life to Christ. Consider what your sins are. Consider the laws of Christ, how holy, strict, and spiritual they are, and whether you, after having carefully considered them, are willing to choose them all. Be sure you are clear in these matters. See that you do not lie to God. Second, be serious in a spirit of holy awe and reverence. Third, claim God's covenant and rely upon God's promise of giving grace and strength so you can keep your promise. Trust not your own strength and power. Fourth, resolve to be faithful. You have given to the Lord your hearts. You have opened your mouths to the Lord. You have dedicated yourself to God with God's power. Never go back. Never go back. And last,
last, be then prepared to renew your covenant with the Lord. Fall on your knees, lift up your hands toward heaven, open your hearts to the Lord as we pray. O righteous God, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, see me as I fall down before you. Forgive my unfaithfulness in not having done your will, for you have promised mercy to me if I turn to you with my whole heart. God requires that you should put away your idols. I hear from the bottom of my heart, renounce them all, covenanting with you that no known sin shall be allowed in my life. Against your will, I have turned my love toward the world. In your power, I will watch all temptations that will lead me away from you. For my own righteousness is riddled with sin, unable to stand before you. Through Christ, God has offered to be your God again, if you would let him. Before all heaven and earth, I here acknowledge you as my Lord and your God. I take you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for my portion, and vow to give up myself, body, and soul as your servant, to serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of my life. God has given the Lord Jesus Christ as the only way and means of coming to God. Jesus, I do here on many of these accept Christ as the only new and living way, and sincerely join myself in the covenant with Him. O oh, blessed Jesus, I come to you, hungry, sinful, miserable, blind, and naked, unworthy even to wash the feet of your servants. I do here, with all my power, accept you as my Lord and I renounce my own unworthiness and vow that you are the Lord of my righteousness. I renounce my own wisdom and take you for my only guide. I renounce my own will and take your will as my law. Christ has told you that you must suffer with him. I do hear covenant with you, O Christ, to take my lot with you as it may fall. Through your grace, I promise that neither life nor death shall part me from you. God has given holy laws as the rule for your life. I do here willingly put my neck under your yoke to carry your burden. All your laws are holy, just, and good. I therefore take them as the rule for my words, thoughts, and actions, promising that I will strive to order my whole life according to your direction. And I do not allow myself to let anything I know to be my duty. The Almighty God searches and knows your heart. O oh God, you know that I make this covenant with you today without a vow or reservation. If any falsehood should be in me, guide me and help me to say it right. And now, Glory be to you, O God and Father, whom I from this day forward shall look upon as my God and Father. Glory be to you, O God the Son, who have loved me and washed me from my sins in your own blood. And now as my Savior and Redeemer, glory be to you, O God, the Holy Spirit, who by your almighty power have turned my heart from sin to God. Almighty oh God, the Lord, omnipotent Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you have now become my covenant friend, and I, through your infinite grace, have become your covenant servant. So be it. And let the covenant I have made on earth be ratified. Amen. You're advised to make this covenant not only in your heart, but in, not only in word but also in, in deed and in writing. Therefore, with all reverence, lay the service before the Lord as your act and deed. When we've done this, you should sign it. Take this home with you. You can sign this and keep this as a, a reminder of your holy agreement between you and God, that you might remember it in times of doubt and temptation. 
There was a solemn covenant that Jesus made with his disciples that was based on the covenant that Moses had uh, with God when he led the people out of Egypt and that Passover uh, meal that they shared right before uh, they exited Egypt. And Jesus used this same meal as a model and a pattern for us to use in the in, we call it the Last Supper or Holy Communion. And so Jesus was celebrating the Passover meal with his disciples. It's like 2,000 years ago, right before he was under trial, you know, arrested under trial and then, uh, ultimately executed. And if what he said was uh, that this bread is my body and it's broken for you, every time you take this bread, do it in remembrance of me. And he took the cup and he poured it out. And he said, this is my blood which is spilled for many. Every time you take this, do it in remembrance of me. And what Jesus was telling his disciples, and now what we claim to believe, is that Jesus was taking the place of all the, the covenantal systems. He was fulfilling those in his presence and in his sacrifice that he was about to make. No more sheep needed to be slaughtered because the Lamb of God was coming and came to be that sacrifice for us. And so when we take this Holy Communion, what we are remembering is that covenantal sacrifice that God made on our behalf. Can we take this covenant and apply it to our lives and say we believe. We believe this is the plan that God has for you individually for us as a body. Let us pray. As we take this holy meal, Lord, we ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and cup, that it may be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And as we take these elements, might we remember what this sacrifice of body and blood mean for us, that, that we no longer have to um, slaughter the sheep in order to uh, atone for our sins, but you have come for us. You have, have taken care of that sin for us. You have carried us across, and all we need to do is believe in you, not for somebody else. We believe that you can carry us across. May we live in that promise this year, the rest of this year. We're just getting started in this year. May it be a covenant, a, a sign of for us as we move forward to this year. We're going to live it for you. Bless these acts of covenant that are happening all over the room and as we take this together as the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Dirk to help me serve communion this morning. I'm going to do it by intention where you take the, the bread and then you dip it and then you can take it as you as you go. I think the best way might be to come up the center aisle here. Come on up here, um, and maybe we'll just start on this side of it. And we'll start in front row, second row. Let's be orderly this time. We're not very orderly in our community, but it's a tight space. So let's be a little orderly. We'll go on this this column of ladies here once you get us going and. File back around you. Just so God,
This is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song.
next Sunday up in the ballroom. We'll have children's ministries going back uh, next Sunday. God bless you all. Happy New Year.